So lucky last. Thanks everyone for hanging around for this. So, um, look, Catalyst is a Moodle, uh, a Moodle partner, and we see lots and lots of Moodles. And I've been involved with Moodle on both sides of the web browser since about uh, 2008. Now, all Moodles are different, but we see some commonalities between them. And I thought I'll put in a talk and just go through sort of 10 things that you can do to sort of improve your Moodle experience. And um, I've tried to make these really low barrier to entry, so you know you can do them yourself now, today, or with a little help from your friends. Um, I've also tried to sort of spread them across the whole sort of Moodle experience, so hopefully something uh, everyone will get something from it. Um, and look, this is probably a bit of a health check as well. So if you're doing everything in these 10 points, that's awesome. That would be really good. So let's get into it. And also, actually, before I do, this is actually starting to feel like a bit more of a summary than a presentation after sitting through everyone's awesome presentations for the last two days. But. So visit Moodle.org. Now, if, you, if you're not doing this and you only ever do one of these 10 things, do this. Like, this is the heart of the Moodle community, in my opinion. Um, it's got all the, like, all the Moodle documentation, all the developer documentation, the forums are awesome. Like, if you've got a how question of how do I do something in Moodle, go here. Someone's already likely asked the question in the forums. Someone's already given an awesome answer. Um, look, I go here on the rare time that I develop these days because I can never remember the data API. Um, and it's also something I actually get new developers to do as part of their ramp up is actually visit this. Um, and look, you'll find things in Moodle.org that you probably don't know Moodle does. And look, if there's some of the cool new features as well, you'll find out by here. So visit this and visit it often. So set up analytics. So analytics to help you discover um, patterns of data in your Moodle. And look, there's been a few talks about analytics around this Moot. Um, it gives you, like, just adding some analytics to your site, like uh, Google Analytics or Peewee, gives you some really good operational data about your site. Um, things like, you know, in this slide, why are all my users leaving only after 10 seconds? Um, you probably can't quite read that. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's also to a good first step on your user journey in analytics. So this is a, getting Google Analytics or Peewee into your site is really low stress. You can just add tracker code uh, via the user interface. You don't actually need to um, do a deployment or change some code, although as Gavin showed you, there's also the cool plugin as well. Um, but once it's in there, you'll start to sort of think of some questions that you haven't asked, and it's a bit of a journey of discovery, and you can actually get in and um, really see some cool things about your, um, your Moodle. Look, this is Peewee. I like Peewee. It's open source. Um, you can you know, install it yourself and have full control over your data. Um, yeah, if you want to know any more about this, come and grab me after this uh, presentation, and I'll give you a bit of a demo. Check your backups. Do you know where your backups are? And this, this would, that would be a question I would ask anybody who looks after your backups. And if you ask them, do you know where my backups are, and they don't meet your gaze, or they <laughs> stammer, that's something you might want to investigate. Um, and then, look, if they do know where they are, follow up with asking them how long it's going to take to restore one. Um, and then have them show you, just to prove that they're not liars. And the reason why I sort of say this, it's much better to ask this question and fix the problems before your data center is full of water. Um, now, this is photoshopped, but we've had clients where this has happened. Talk to your users. Now, when I'm talking about users, I'm talking about just not just your users like your students and your teachers, but your administrative users, your support users, your IT staff, all of those groups. And look, quite often, one of those groups, use one or more of those groups as an angry pack of lines to be avoided at all costs. Uh, but Moodles that work well, that suit your users' needs, that are well supported, people talk. There are good lines of communication. So set up a meeting of representatives from all those groups. Um, have a frank and open conversation about what's going on. Uh, what works, what doesn't. Share the ideas and the pain points. And look, it's really surprising to me how many organisations don't do this and wonder why their engagement with their Moodle's low. Um, and look, the change that come out of this, there mightn't be any. You might be all on track, but if you don't talk, you don't know. So do this and do it often. 
enable conditional access. Now, this is something that's been in uh, Moodle since 2.3, I believe, and it allows you to limit access to activities within a course. Um, and you can act limit activities by all sorts of things. You might be able to read that. Things like date, grade, user profile. Um, you can do complex sets of them now. Um, and look, the combinations of criteria can be quite complex, as we've seen in some of the other presentations. Um, it's, so it's really, obviously, it's really good for, you know, structuring a flow before a course, doing X before doing Y. It's really good for also doing um, remedial or extra credit work. Hey, you didn't do great in that course, or that quiz, here's some extra resources. Hey, you absolutely did 100%, here's some more challenging work. Um, we've also seen it used uh, in sort of a learning as discovery type way, so you can sort of unlock certain activities as you work through them and something else pops up and you can go, oh, that's that information that I thought I might need and then go through that. Uh, want more information on conditional access? C.1. Um, so this one's a bit of a cheeky one. Set up memcached with Moodle Universal Cache, and I did sort of touch on this when I did my uh, performance talk earlier in the moot. Um, so just a really quick outline on this. Caching is a way that computer applications speed up information by storing the result. So it doesn't have to go to the database and do this crazy complicated um, query and then come back. If you, if you caches it, it'll do it once and just return the result from then on after. Um, Markle, the Moodle universal cache, is how Moodle handles a lot of its application caching. It handles a lot of that sort of request storing. Um, by default, it stores data to disk. Um, if, you put, uh, and if you put that into an application like Memcached, which is a little application that runs on the server that allows you to store those cache results in memory, things get faster. Um, look, it does require you to install an application on your server, but generally it's pretty easy for most um, operating systems that you want to run Moodle on. Um, yeah, the, why would you do this? Well, essentially speed and cost, you know. Speed makes your site better, users don't have to wait. Cost, things, you know, faster sites are more performant, you can do less with more. So do a plugin audit. So um, as we all know, plugins allow you to extend Moodle. Um, but Moodle's been, that have been around for a while, collect plugins, and as we sort of learned yesterday, up to about 240 in some cases. Um, and look, are these plugins being used uh, you know, uh, if so, by who, could other, and even can others use them? And so the Moodle interface, which you probably can't see, does allow you to drill down, find out what plugins are being used and how many are being used um, in your site, and then you can actually drill down and see where they are. Now, I suppose, look, unused plugins can be candidates for removal. Like, if you're not using them, why bother having the support burden for them? But also, too, just because they're not being used doesn't mean that they should be removed. It just may be that no one in your organisation knows about them. So um, do the audit, have a bit of a look at them, and take your results to the catch-up that you'll have from point four. Now, check out the plugin directory. And in some cases, this is almost the ante of what I said in from number seven. But if you've got a question where I wish Moodle could or I wish Moodle had, there's probably a plugin for it. Um, the one that's come up a few times is actually, in, people are talking about analytics, is the uh, Moodle URLs that are view dot some crazy ID or user dot some crazy ID. There's a plugin to make them semantic. Clean URLs, there's a plugin for that. Um, you want tokens, so you can, you know, issue tokens for people to sign up for your courses and, um, you know, sort of have that eight bar barrier to entry. Um, there's a plugin for it. Want a better wiki? There's a plugin for it. Um, remember, Moodle's built to be extended. Uh, browse and review some courses. So not everyone in your organisation has sort of full visibility of all of your courses. And you, as sort of a teacher, may not have sort of visibility of what your other colleagues are doing. So sort of having something like a, pl a, a course review just allows you to sort of start sharing ideas and that helps that building the process of building champions and um, developing best practices. So. You know, if you get a chance, do review other you know, courses in your organisation and um, even organise a show and tell. And finally, whoop, finally, start an upgrade of conversation. Now, every version of Moodle is better. I'll say it again, every version of Moodle is better. Um, and look, the more often you upgrade, the easier that it is. So, 
if you're on an old version, look, upgrades can be a bit painful, but look, just start the conversation and see where you are. You know, find out, uh, find, actually find out what version of Moodle you're on and whether it's still supported, because that's always a good trigger for an upgrade conversation. Um, I see a lot of, I wish Moodle could, or I wish Moodle did. It's probably in the new version, like 3.1, it's gonna be awesome. Um, so get people excited about upgrading. That's it. Great. Thank you.